This is the Unity tablet, an Android tablet that I helped develop over 10 years ago. And today, we're going to take a look at it. So recently, on my office tour video, someone commented asking about this tablet and if I could do a review of it. And I can actually do one better, because I still have one in box quote unquote brand new uh, pre-production, but we can get this unboxed and take a look at the whole thing. This was a really fun project that I worked on for many years, over 10 years ago, and it was really set to kind of make a big change in what the difference between an Android tablet and a desktop computer really was. Nonetheless, let's get it open, let's check it out, and ultimately, let's discuss why I think it failed and you've probably never, ever heard of it. So here we go. It is in quite a large box, as you can see. Uh, and I really liked the logo. I wasn't responsible for it in any way. In fact, my main focus was on some of the software, which hopefully we can get working today and kind of experiment with. So off slides this big sleeve. And inside you have more cardboard, bit of silver. Now this was a pre-production unit, so this wasn't final packaging, but we were definitely working towards final packaging. And you take the lid off, and here we go. So first things first, something a little unique to this, which definitely starts to kind of maybe give an idea of what the audience for this tablet was. But this is a Bluetooth headset. Uh, it has a dial on the top, which you can turn to increase the volume and decrease the volume a button to click to turn it on and off, and then you have a speaker and a microphone. It's quite a futuristic design. I quite like it. Um, but yeah, this was a kind of Bluetooth headset. Taking out of the padding, we have the tablet itself, which we will look at in much more detail shortly. Under uh, here, we have our accessories, and here we have the tablet dock, which is quite a hefty beast indeed, and it docks in there, and then round the back we have a kind of plethora of ports. We've got headset port there, we have a USB-C port for power, Ethernet port, an HDMI mini port, which again, horrible port, and three USB ports. Then here we have the stand for the phone, if you like which has a micro USB port around the back, again, for power. And then in these boxes, we have a generic micro USB cable. Again, this was kind of pre-production packaging. These are just off the shelf cables. And then in this one, we have a USB-C power cable as well, which is Unity branded. And that's everything in the box. So let's have a look at the tablet itself. So the tablet itself is quite a hefty, chunky machine. This was, like I have to remind you, 10 years ago that this was being developed. Definitely a different time. Things are pretty thick. However, you've got a lot going on here as well. We have a USB-C port here, USB-A port, restart, reset button, the dock kind of connector, if you like, and a SIM card slot. And then around the front, big screen and a webcam at the front there, and stereo speakers either side. And that's kind of everything. Uh, around the back, we do then have another small camera, uh, the Unity logo, and it's this rubberized kind of plastic, which is really starting to degrade now, 10 years on. Um, this was quite the fad for a while, and it's kind of horrible. I hate it. Uh, but this is the 21st <laughs> built tablet. Um, so we did do a run of these uh, kind of for promotional and for testing and everything else. So we are kind of pre-production, but right near the end of that cycle. All right, let's get some power. Let's turn it on and let's check it out. So with the tablet, charged up and booted. Here we go. Um, this hasn't been particularly used, but again, 
this is pre-production so it doesn't have all the like startup setup stuff but we can go in and we can see a little bit about the device we can see that it's running android 5 so that really does date it and it has a rocket chip 3288 processor so you know at the time it was a pretty performant device let's uh, get it connected to the wi-fi and let's get system information up properly so we can kind of dig into the specs a little bit more so we've got a uh, system information app installed and running and we can see here that we have four gigabytes of ram we have a quad core cpu which as kind of mentioned is this rocket chip rk3288 <clears throat> four core cpu um that's kind of the most important things android 5 this has roots because this is a test device test version of the os uh, and yeah that's kind of <clears throat> the key information here four gigabytes of ram and a quad core cpu so overall when you're kind of just using this it seems like a pretty standard normal android tablet it's running android 5 you can still kind of do some stuff with it browsing kind of still works uh, there's definitely some issues with like if a website's only using modern day certs uh, some websites definitely don't like this anymore as you can kind of see here uh, things are a little bit broken <laughs> you know it's it's a web browser from 10 years ago it is kind of what you would expect and yeah for the most part pretty standard android tablet except for uh, one thing, and something that you might have actually noticed looking at this screen, there's a couple of apps on here that are a little bit odd. This user, this Linux user manager, for one, uh, it allows you to list some users, uh, and you can change the password for those users, and you can create users here as well. Interesting. And very important. So this was one of the apps that I developed, along with this screen switcher, and the code behind it all. So if we go into this and we press this button that says switch to Linux, we end up in a Linux distribution running full screen. And in fact, it is actually using the native screen. Android is still running in the background. It's just we've killed the Android display manager and we've started up our, our in this instance, XFCE. Let's see if I can just, uh, and um, as you can see, we've, uh, we're running Ubuntu 14.04 on uh, this version. So again, slightly out of date, but it is actually saying there's some updates, which is kind of interesting. Uh, let's see if it will install them. Uh, but we have full Android. And as you kind of noticed, the touchscreen is working properly. Um, okay, failed to download those packages. I can kind of understand that, you know, I'm not even going to start getting into whether they, what's going on there. Um, but yeah, this is a full install of Ubuntu 14.04 for ARM. And using XFCE as the display manager, we've got some applications already kind of built in, uh, namely, for example, LibreOffice here. And there's an on-screen keyboard somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. It wasn't really 100% you know, set, finished. But, it, you know, we have a full working... There you go. There is our um, Word application, LibreOffice. Uh, I think we can probably get onto the web as well. If I remember rightly, we were having some issues with Chromium, but hey ho. Um, there you go. There's Firefox. Yeah, it's 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 doesn't like the fact that the certs aren't working anymore. Again, old software, not quite so worky. No more. <laughs> uh, things like battery percentage working perfectly fine you had full basically linux support and the key thing here is again android is still running these two things are running in complete parallel with each other the only thing that's happening is that the uh, ui is being switched between the two so again if we go into here uh if we go into system there's a button for android and we click that and it'll take us back into the android display manager Or, well, it's supposed to. Something is bugging out a little bit here. Uh, again, pre-production software, but it was software that I was writing. So that's a little unfortunate. 
nonetheless, that in itself is kind of interesting, but this had another trick up its sleeve. The other trick that it has up its sleeve, other than just being able to switch between Android and Linux on the tablet itself, is to do with the dock down here. So we have the dock, we have a battery pack plugged in for power, we have the, an HDMI cable plugged in to this monitor, and we have a USB hub with keyboard and mouse. And if we then plug in our tablet, we give it a second, You can just see off camera, let me pan up, that we actually have our Linux environment with keyboard and mouse working straight away. Now, granted, the resolution is a little bit weird because it's 1080p, but nonetheless, it's working. And we can maybe bring up our office environment. Maybe we want to do some writing up here. Meanwhile, the tablet is still tableting. We still have our Android goodness. We just also happen to have our LibreOffice up here, and keyboard and mouse is working, albeit with a little bit of input lag. Um, yeah, okay, it's not working amazingly. But again, pre-production software. But the point was, you had access to a full desktop environment while your tablet was docked doing Android tablety things on one system. And uh, that was that was definitely kind of the selling point of this tablet. This was the thing that I was working on. I developed the kind of interface between the two. We were working on lots of other improvements that were going to happen further down the line. For example, being able to share notifications, share data, all sorts of fun stuff. But yeah, this is uh, amazingly still working uh, out of the box today. Okay, granted, it is, you know, old it is messed up with the screen resolution because it's only going up to 1080p uh it is a little laggy but it's working it's working and i have to say i'm kind of impressed that it's working at all uh so that is the unity tablet that is the project that i worked on for a number of years and unfortunately ultimately didn't make it to market there we have it that is the unity tablet that i helped develop and we certainly weren't the only ones doing this sort of thing. It was something that other companies were experimenting with, for sure. For example, Motorola had their lap dock thing, which you could plug a Motorola Atrix phone into. Uh, I have the dock still. Unfortunately, I don't have the phone anymore. So if you've got an Atrix laying around, hit me up. We also had the likes of Ubuntu themselves releasing mobile versions that would then also have some sort of desktop environment when you docked it as well. Uh, but I would say in terms of a purpose-built tablet for this sort of thing, we were definitely the furthest along the line. Uh, unfortunately, it just never took off. Well, that kind of leads us to the final question of uh, why did it fail? Why did it not succeed? And it's a difficult one. Now, I actually left the project before kind of it officially came to an end. So I'm sure there are lots of kind of internal reasons why this particular project did fail. I think one of the things being that uh, it was very difficult to get any kind of buy-in from any large enterprise customers, which was ultimately the people that were trying to be targeted with this. It wasn't ever really going to be a super consumer focused product. But other than that, in the market in general, I just there wasn't really this appetite from anyone for this kind of product. Today, we do still have a few products that kind of have similar functionality. If you look at something like Samsung DeX, where you do have a desktop experience, if you dock your phone into a dock with a monitor, a keyboard, and mouse, but all that's really doing is taking Android apps and making them work on a larger screen. This idea of a full kind of desktop operating system running things like the Unity tablet, things like the Motorola Atrix setup really fizzled out quite quickly because it just wasn't what the consumer market wanted. At the time, there was still a very clear separation between phones slash tablets and laptops slash desktop computers. They were two very different things for very different tasks. Obviously, a tablet computer 
was less powerful than a laptop or desktop computer. There was obvious, there was issues around the fact that you know you weren't going to have a Windows version anytime soon. So a lot of enterprise customers that were tied into that particular OS, they didn't want to use Linux. And really, there just wasn't the right market for it. It was such a cool idea, such a, a, a nerdy idea that I still hold on to. I absolutely love. But the public just wasn't interested. And so support and uh, progress on these kind of devices came to an end pretty quickly. You only have to look at all the different players that tried to do this and look at what's actually survived, which is essentially, like I say, blowing up Android apps to the big screen, to realize that there still is a very distinct difference between phones and tablets and the experiences that they give and desktops and laptops and the experiences they give. Look at the Apple iPads, which now have laptop slash desktop class processors in them but are still very limited in their software and operating systems. There just isn't that crossover, and for many reasons, it's never happened. Still, it was a really fun project to work on for a while and be able to kind of build something interesting. And I hope you've enjoyed this video looking at it and I being able to document something that you've probably never heard of and I'm sure most people have never heard of. So I'm glad that I've been able to document this and put it online. But we are going to wrap it up there for today. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you again very, very soon for another video. Bye for now.